changes that were passed by the Texas legislature and will be voted on by Texas uh, voters coming up in November? That is a good question. We have not got a really dollars and cents mm -hmm. idea of how significant these changes were made. That's why we have our guest on for KSAT Q&A. Gary Rivas is the president of SWBC Ad Valorem Tax Advisors. Gary, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Would you term what the Texas, just the state did as significant? Absolutely. It is going to provide significant and noticeable tax relief when we get our tax bills in October. And that's what I, you know, following what's happened in multiple special sessions at the state level, it's been complicated for people. So at the end of the day, as Steve mentioned, dollars and cents are what people are wondering about. So do you have a ballpark figure of what the average San Antonio homeowner could expect to save? Yes. And it quite, it is very much a complex system that, yeah. that, that they've arrived at. But nevertheless, when it all boils down to is I believe the average uh, homeowner will probably realize a tax savings of about twelve to $1,300 a year, mm. an again, annually, on their property tax statement. That's significant. Now, that is that just from the state, or that's when you add the state, the county, some of the things that the city's done? That's pretty much just from the state. Um, okay. The state, it, it's a moving target, meaning you have different price points. Uh, different valuations of, of homes and properties. So it, it'll vary according to the price point. But for the average uh, taxpayer, the average homeowner, to your point, it, the savings should be between twelve and $1,300. That's, that's significant. And, and yes. then, like you say, Steve, the other exemptions and the other incentives that the city, county, and so forth are offering as well is going to add to that, that savings. Okay. Is, is there one part of what the state passed that is most significant it, 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 and just off the top of my head i would think not being the tax expert you are that it would be the homestead exemption i would tend to agree with you um i i think the average home owner is the one who needs the most relief and that hundred thousand dollar homestead exemption which will apply strictly to the school district tax rate which is the largest share of a person's tax bill is going to provide the most significant and noticeable tax savings um, across the board. And again, depending on the price point, it should be about $1,300 a year. And wow. that's something that Texas voters have to sign off on come November. Historically, they have. I'm right, it right. Will likely pass again, right? So increasing <clears throat> the homestead exemption from 40000 to 100000 If we're going to vote on that come November, when would we start to see that savings reflected? That's a great question because we get our tax bills in October. So uh, the Bear County Tax Assessor Collector, Albert Uresti, has said that he is going to send out provisional property tax statements in October with the preparation that tax bills will already take into account these measures that have been passed by the House and the Senate, yet to be approved by the governor, but they're going to act as if these bills are going to be passed by the voters in November. Mm. Is there one big mistake that people make when it comes to their property taxes? You know, the biggest mistake that I see is people not taking advantage of the homestead exemption or any other exemptions for which they might qualify. And, and that's a big deal. It's very simple to rectify. A simple call to the, uh, the, the, the appraisal district or a, a professional like myself um, can help navigate what it would take to get that corrected. Yeah. So there are homestead exemptions. That's for anyone who owns a home and it's their primary residence, exactly. correct? Right. But then there are also exemptions in place for people over 65, veterans. What, what else exists out there? Your disability exemption, which is very similar to the over 65 exemption, uh, the disabled veterans, um, uh, disability we talked about. Uh, there, there's just a, a myriad of different types of exemptions that people might qualify for, but they just need to talk to the appraisal district to find out what, they, what uh, options are available. Is it your blanket advice for somebody that no matter what their property tax bill is, that they should protest? Absolutely. Uh, filing a protest every year constitutes a reappraisal whereas the appraisal district is required to reappraise only once every three years. So if you appraise every year 
for those homestead properties, you are automatically limiting the amount of increase that the appraisal district can take on the taxable portion to 10% over any given year. So if you protest every year, you are limiting that increase to a maximum of 10%. Whereas if you wait two years and they say that they didn't appraise your neighborhood, then you could realize a 20% increase or more um, uh, when, when they get around to it. Mm -hmm. When it comes to protesting your appraisal value or even applying for these exemptions, somebody might think, okay, that sounds like a lot of red tape, a lot of paperwork. What's the reality of what somebody needs to have in order to make those things happen? It's really not a complicated process, especially to file your homestead in over 65. Um, there are tutorials uh, offered by the Bear Appraisal District online that will navigate you through the process. It's very easy. It's as simple as downloading a form, filling in your, your ownership, your mailing information, providing uh, a copy of your, your um, driver's license, and that's pretty much about it. Or you can actually go to the appraisal district office or the tax office, I believe, will do it as well mm -hmm. and file it there. All right, Gary, before we let you go, how significant is what the, what the Texas legislature passed for businesses in the state of Texas, especially small businesses it seemed like they were trying to target? Right. Uh, part of the package is they, they tried to take care of the, tax, the property taxpayers, but uh, they set out a little different provision to provide an, an additional exemption of $2.47 million in, in gross uh, receipts for small businesses. So it is a franchise tax exemption that uh, many times, many people call them the, the nuisance tax. Mm -hmm. But that's going to affect you know, over $60,000 60, small businesses across Texas. So that's pretty significant. Many of these businesses who haven't paid taxes will cease to pay any more of those franchise taxes. Yeah. I bet a lot of people describe a lot of taxes as nuisance taxes. Yes. <laughs> Gary Rivas with SWBC, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. You have answered a lot of questions in dollars and cents. We appreciate that. Thank you, Gary. We'll be right back. It's part of our KSAT community, and we are trying to raise money today for Project MEND. They are a group that takes medical equipment, refurbishes it in many cases, and makes it usable for people who can't afford medical equipment. Dexter Moon joins me now. He's the Chief Operations Officer. And Dexter, I have been told that you are an expert in the process of taking perhaps gently used equipment and how it becomes useful again through Project MEND. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And yes, we're able to take in donations of medical equipment. We refurbish it. We'll uh, analyze it. We'll make sure that the equipment is safe. And then we'll sanitize it to state standards and then reissue it. Not only do we do that, we also maintain it for the life of the equipment as long as the client has it. So if it needs repaired after we've issued it, we'll bring it back in and repair it for them. Yeah, 210-351-1363 is the number to call if you'd like to make a donation to Project MEND. We're asking for monetary donations today. What is that gonna go towards, Dexter? That is gonna go to operating costs. It allows us to make sure that we have proper staffing as well as a proper sanitizing equipment as well as making sure that our vehicles are up and running so that we can get out deliver that equipment as well as pick it up so if somebody has used medical equipment they can call project mend and you'll come and pick it up we'll come and pick it up as well sir yes sir uh, how uh, how important are these donations oh they're extremely important we can't give out what we don't have so as we have those donations come in we're able to get those repaired get them recycled as well as get them refurbished and get them back out to the, the clients. All right, you guys are gonna be here till 10.30 tonight. Yes, sir. I appreciate you guys, you know that, right? Yes, sir, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Dexter. Myra? Thank you, Steve, thank you, Dexter. Let's take a look outside with live cam, another scorcher out there, and Mia, just no real relief in sight. I wish we had better news, but yes, the triple digits are going to continue. We got up to 102 today. I guess that's a little bit better than the 104 that we saw earlier this week. But yes, high pressure still overall going to be in control of our weather pattern this weekend and next week. So the triple digits are still in the forecast, but that high pressure system shifts ever so slightly west this weekend, which means we do have a small chance for rain back in the forecast Saturday and into Sunday. So we'll time that out. Plus, get you a look at the latest drought monitor that was released this morning after the break. 
The Bear County Sheriff's Office investigating human remains found in a duffel bag today. That bag was found on someone's property on the southwest side. Sheriff Javier Salazar says this is being investigated as a homicide. The San Antonio police investigating the shooting of a teenager at an apartment complex that happened this morning near Colebra and Callahan Roads. SAPD says the teenager shot in the head and back. He's currently in critical condition. No arrests have been made. San Antonio police also investigating the deadly shooting of a 28 year old. Police say he was shot at a motel on South Flores and Southeast Military Drive. The victim's name has not been released and so far no arrests have been made. Tonight, Von Army police are arresting 24 year old Anthony Sanchez after 12 migrants found inside a stolen tanker trailer last night. He now faces several charges, including 12 counts of human smuggling. None of the migrants were hurt. That's your 60 second recap. Turning to the forecast now may not be much to talk about, but there is some rain chance out there somewhere. It's a lot of heat, <laughs> a lot of heat, but yeah, it's a step in the right direction. I guess we could say it's something to look forward to as we head into the weekend. It's not going to be for everybody. Most of us are probably going to miss out, unfortunately. But yes, we do have straight isolated rain chances Saturday and into Sunday, but what's going to affect everybody? Still that heat and that's exactly what we're seeing out there right now. Let's take a look at some of those current conditions again. 102 today. It's 100 now though over at SA International 103 on the south side at Stinson. Just a degree hotter in Pleasanton out there in Atascosa County 99 at Lost Maples as well as Kerrville 101 the current temperature out there in comfort. But when you factor in the humidity, notice these yellow numbers. The heat index values are actually not that far away from the air temperature. That's good news. A little bit of optimism there. We have been able to mix down some of that drier air this afternoon and evening. Dew points, how we measure that moisture in the lower levels of the atmosphere, currently in the 50s and 60s. So a bit better than what we've seen over the past couple of weeks. But it is dry. We've seen plenty of sunshine after some morning cloud cover. High pressure still very much in control. You can see not much going on across the Lone Star State. And while high pressure is not entirely going to go away in the coming days, it is going to shift ever so slightly west and center itself closer to the Four Corners region this weekend. And as it does so, it could crack open the door for a little boundary to approach San Antonio and South Central Texas. We've got a very stray storm chance in the forecast for your Saturday slightly better into Sunday, but you can see it's not going to be for everybody, so we don't need to get our hopes up too much. We've got it at about a 10% chance for the first half of the weekend, slightly better, but only a 20% shot into Sunday before those rain chances go away as we head into the beginning of next week, and that is unfortunate because it is no secret we could definitely use the rain. This is the latest drought monitor update that actually was released earlier this morning and the biggest thing that stands out is the expansion of this maroon and red color. That's the extreme to exceptional drought. Exceptional is the worst classification of drought and that has expanded now moving into the far northern portions of Bear County. That extreme drought has also expanded a little bit farther off to the south as well. So as we gear up for August, Here's hoping that we can find a slightly more notable and significant pattern change that would give us a few more beneficial rain chances in the forecast because yes, until then, a whole lot of pink on this graphic. More daily chances to climb into the triple digits. 102 as we head into Saturday and Sunday, then 103 Monday into Tuesday as that high pressure system once again inches a little bit closer to the state of Texas. So until then, another muggy start mid to upper 70s tomorrow morning. Very similar to what we've seen over the past several days. A few clouds expected and then plenty of sunshine is going to take back over 88 degrees by 11 a.m. 95 by 1 p.m. And then daytime highs top off around 102 here in San Antonio, 105 in Carrizo Springs, 102 out east in Gonzales, and 103 up I-35 in New Braunfels. So yes, we will monitor those isolated chances this weekend, and then more heat takes us into next week, and that's also when we may need to monitor for some more Saharan dust. So we'll, of course, continue to keep you posted on that in the days ahead, guys. All right, thank you, Mia. We're going to take you to Swifty Clara after the break. Yay. To the buzz and a California city will soon have a new name. Are you ready for it? Santa Clara 
what is now known as Swifty Clara. At least while Taylor Swift is in town for her Eras tour next Friday and Saturday. She will also be the honorary mayor of Swifty Clara. The decision was approved during a city council meeting earlier this week, so it's very official. Yeah. Swift will perform two nights at Levi Stadium in Swifty Clara on July 28th and the 29th. I'm just going to see if you're going to say anything. No. All right, wine lovers and pickle lovers, get ready for this. The first ever pickle-flavored sparkling wine cocktail. Oh. I don't know why. Clausen, no. I like pickles, by the way. Clausen Pickles has teamed up with Spritz Society to create a white wine cocktail with the mm. pickle company's signature pickle flavor. I like pickles, too. And people who are really into them. pickles... Maybe they would dig this. This is the first time that Clausen has entered the beverage market in its 150 year history. What started off as actually an April Fool's prank back in April 2022 turned into reality. Spritz Society was surprised by the positive reaction and the demand from fans after its April Fool's prank about a pickle flavored wine. I've had pickle flavored beer. Have you ever had pickle flavored beer? I actually have. And seasoning yeah. that you can put on it? Yeah. So maybe it's not that different? Believe it or not, we did a case that explains and pickle flavored beer was part of it. Yeah, it's a big deal. <laughs> Be right back. One last look here at a big traffic backup still ongoing 1604 at Rocket Lane all because of a chemical spill. It's expected to be backed up for a while as this cleanup continues. We'll see you tonight on the Night Beat at 10.